I'm already disappointed. None of these plants are secured in here. So all those small plants have cold damage, obviously, but they're also just smashed. Only doing this two weeks in a row. They're bad plant unboxing. <laughs> they look so bad. Here I was really excited to unbox these beautiful plants and instead just have a table full of mush and crunch. I needed a pellet cleanser. I don't know about y'all, but those last couple plant hauls, that just wasn't it. Got a box here from The Green Escape. Much more reliable seller. Have ordered from them multiple times on Etsy. A few twists in here, things that I haven't experienced with ordering from them before. There are some plants in here that said they're potted. I don't know if they ship potted, but they're potted and not just plugs. And orders I placed in the past up until recently. Most of what this seller on Etsy sold were just plugs, starter plants, teeny tiny little bitty plants. And uh, now it looks like they're starting to offer some things in two inch and in four inch containers. They have a smattering of starters and what they listed as potted plants in here. I am excited to get this popped open. That's the name, the green escape, if you don't know what I'm talking about right there. You can see the package itself doesn't look that hot. That's not their fault, this is, that's USPS. So there's a smattering of different sizes in here. Decent house plants and some plants that I would not consider to be good house plants, but are still pretty neat. Maybe better for terrariums. We'll talk about that as I get into it. Let me just cut it open and have a look at some plants. I'm not anticipating any type of cold damage, even though it is February. And February is typically pretty cold here, but it's so far this year, it's been quite nice. So that's already a one-up <laughs> that they have on the other growers like Hertz, who for some reason shipped out a package when it was like negative eight degrees outdoors. Green Escape has something the other places I ordered from didn't offer. Already off to a great start, look at that. Even though the temperature's outside, pretty safe for shipping, still have things wrapped up nicely in a foil package. It's not just a heat pack thrown inside of the box. In probably both of those other videos, I talked about how a heat pack is nice, it helps, but if it's just in a cardboard box taped to the side, it's not really going to do much of anything. There needs to be something surrounding everything. Is that it? There's a heat pack, but uh, it's not very warm. Wasn't really expecting it to be. It didn't need to be because it's not really cold outside. Okay, now for the fun part. Feels like there's different sized plants in here. A couple larger ones in there. It does feel like they're in a pot. And then in here, these are the little ones. I think it'd be more fun to start off with the little plants and see what's going on in here. Looks good. It's how you protect plants from cold is to actually wrap them up in something. Makes a huge difference. Lots of good stuff here. I'm thinking that the plants, okay, I was about to say they might be a little bit too moist, but I think this is probably perfect. They're protected from the elements. I don't think some moisture being in there should be an issue. And this looks like it's just fine. Look at that foliage. I should probably finish opening before I start going on about what the plant looks like. There we go. It's taped into the paper. Probably don't like having their roots pulled on like that. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful emerald green on top with white variegation that fizzles out from the veins. Has a really nice airbrushed appeal to it. The undersides, that lovely purplish tone to it. This is an aphalandra. It has a beautiful red flower spike on it. Doesn't have to get too terribly large to start flowering. I would expect to probably have some spikes off of this come summertime. Very interesting flower spike that hummingbirds and pollinators will probably appreciate. This is one that I got much more for the foliage. Yeah, two tones on top and that beautiful reddish maroon color on the bottom. That's a nice looking leaf. Okay, next up. Oh, it's tiny, but it looks good. I, I expect these to be small, by the way. If it's labeled as a starter plant, then obviously don't expect them to be very big. These are just little plugs, rooted cuttings, and oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that leaf. There is so much going on there. And this probably looks familiar. This is a begonia. It's a begonia maculata, which is a very common begonia. But what's special about this maculata is that it is extra speckly. <laughs> That's it. It's called double dot. Double dot maculata. So it's going to be the same thing as your regular begonia maculata. It has that fun, somewhat upright vase-shaped growth to it. It's been improved upon by getting way more intensity in there. Look at how many dots there are. 
that beautiful silver iridescence with them too. There's just a lot more going on in here with the dots. Double dots, beautiful silver sheen. Looks like someone took a metallic paint pen and went to town. This is much, much, much prettier in person than it was in the pictures. I was on the fence about ordering this one just because I was like, well, it's just Immaculata. But one of my favorite things and most people's favorite things about the Immaculata begonias is how heavily speckled they are and the silvery sheen you get with those polka dots. So this is really serving up. That looks great. Just imagine that when these leaves are great big, you know, four to six inch giant leaves covered with all those silvery splotches, glittery and shiny. You can't go wrong with glittery and shiny. Okay. And this next one is going to be something that's going to tray them. That's freaking huge. I was not expecting that. That is not what I was expecting from a starter plant. So this is called a red sword. Sometimes it's called a purple sword. A papalis acumenitis. Well, acumenitissim, uh, I believe is the actual name on this one. Just like with the ethylandra, this one, it's all about the foliage. Look at those leaves. Aren't those beautiful? Looks like a painting. Soft grayish blue tones splotched in with some darker and lighter greens, various shades in there. And the undersides of the foliage, absolutely beautiful. Not one that gets particularly large. These are a humidity lovers. More so than just the humidity I found when growing, I've had this like once before a long time ago, was stability. It wasn't a plant that liked to be moved around very often. So it's going to go into a terrarium or something with a cloche over the top where it can just hang out, sit still, get some bright indirect light, never full sun, and just keep looking beautiful. Great option for terrariums. Look at that foliage. Oh, pardon my hands. The desk had dirt on it before I started filming and instead of grabbing my little broom thing, I just took my hand and wiped it all off and now that's all caked in there. Occupational hazard. You don't like dirt, probably shouldn't be watching plant videos. Isn't that beautiful? The new foliage you can see comes out a lighter color and then it darkens as it ages. This is a nice, refreshing leaf on it. I don't know, is that the right word? Do y'all know what I mean when I say that the foliage looks refreshing? Hopefully you do. Be nice to go through the plugs first and then can move on to the potted plants. Always with the stickers. So many sticky things on here. You gotta keep it shut somehow. Okay, this one. This is a cool plant. It came with a note that says, Hi there, thank you for ordering from our shop. These plants may not have variegation due to growing in low light conditions. With plenty of bright indirect light, the plants will produce more variegation. The listing states the variegation is light right now as it is winter. When the sun intensifies during summer, the variegation will become more vibrant. I like how they had to put that in caps and in quotations and preface it with the listing says, as in don't forget that this is, this is what you should have read before ordering the plant and that's what it said when you ordered it. I'm fine with that. These are plants that have great variegation, but good to know. I'm not gonna get mad if there's not much variegation in there. That's easy to fix. This, though it doesn't look like it, this is an Alocasia New Guinea Gold. It doesn't have any variegation. I'm glad they included that note. I'm confused by this because it's not just that it doesn't have variegation. The stems on this are not what I'm familiar with, with a New Guinea Gold. So the Alocasia New Guinea Gold, let me back up first. Alocasia lutea. That's one of my favorites. Has a chartreuse green upright leaf on it with nice yellow veinage. Sometimes that veining can be more orange depending on the amount of lights they're getting, but it's one of my favorite alocasias. I haven't seen them for sale in quite a long time. But when I have, they've just been overpriced. It's kind of, I guess, just the trend since 2020 with plants. But I used to be able to get them in a three gallon pot in a 10 inch container from the local nurseries for like 12 bucks every spring. They just put them out there with their summer annuals, throw it in the ground, and a couple months later, you have a four foot tall, gorgeous plant. Those haven't been an option for the last few years, at least not up here, not where I live in St. Louis. I was looking to order some Ludias and wasn't finding them for a price that I like, but they had the New Guinea Gold, which is kind of the same thing. I'm gonna put pictures up so you can see what it <laughs> will in theory look like when it gets bigger. Because to me, this doesn't look anything like any New Guinea Golds I've ever seen. Not because of the lack of irrigation in the foliage, but because of the speckling and purple that's down there in the stems. But I've only seen a couple of New Guinea Golds and they were much larger. And when they're that large, you tend to focus mostly on the foliage. So maybe they always have this speckling along the stems. I'm not really sure. <laughs> oh, oh, that's little. That's a tiny little baby. I love that variegation. Still got some fuzzies in there. Some floof left over from the packaging. It's a variegated fry deck, a pretty common plant at this point. If you watched the video where I was unboxing plants from Sunshine Greens, I talked about how I had really placed that order 
because I needed, or I shouldn't say needed, but I had wanted a couple of variegated fried eggs for some planters outside. And I needed two of them because they flank a pathway. So it's planters on each side. I ordered three, maybe four, can't remember, but they only sent one and they're back ordered until March and yet they're still not fulfilling orders. And it's, it's a whole mess. I'm not gonna go into all that. You can watch that video if you wanna know more about that. The Green Escape, they have them too. A lot of people have them. The difference is that the Green Escape actually has them. So if you want them, I would recommend ordering it from them. The Variegated Fried Egg. Fried Egg alone is a beautiful alocasia. It has a velvety green leaf on it that has nice white veinage on the inside veinage. I don't know if that's a word. Gonna run with it though. The Variegated one is just that, but with a lot of variegation on it. The leaves on them are very, very pretty. The Variegated Fried Egg, you get it. Now I have two. I needed another one. That was actually what made me place this order was that I needed two and they had screwed me over at the other cell or only sending me one. And I knew Green Escape, they'd be good for it and they'd send it. So here we are. Now there's another one and lots of other fun plants. Lots of fun variegated alocasias here. This one's taped up much more heavily, which makes sense. It's a potted plant. This will be the first time I've ever opened a potted plant from the Green Escape. I anticipate it's probably going to be just as good as anything else I've ever gotten from them. Nice getting plant mail when the plants are already potted up and you don't have to rush to get them into a container. That's one of the things about the plugs that I'm not crazy about, but it's just sort of the trade-off to being able to get certain plants at certain prices. <laughs> we got plenty of floof in here. Lots of floof. This one's very well protected and very, very pretty. Look at that leaf. That's beautiful. I have a lot to say about this one. This is a really cool plant. Is it, does it look better sitting upright or should I lay it down? I can't tell. Well, the plant itself would probably prefer to be upright, so I can just let it do its dangly thing right here for the time being. This is a Critosperma uh, Johnstonii. Critosperma Critosperma, it doesn't really matter how you say it. This is a plant that I have wanted for a long time. I've had them before, had one before many years ago. It was a challenge to grow. I would not consider this a house plant just because it has certain needs that are harder to replicate indoors, but there are ways to do it. It probably deserves its own dedicated video but I'll just go ahead and spit it out there really fast and maybe someday talk about it more in depth. The Critospermas like things warm and humid and uh, moist roots at all times. These are a great plant to grow immersed. If you have a pond, that'd be a great place to put them. The only caveat there is that they like their root zone specifically to stay nice and warm. So the water needs to be warm. The Critosperma that I grew many, many years ago did great for me during the summertime. I had it outdoors. I think it was in my pond, pond, like an above ground pond thingy out there. And then when I moved it inside was when things struggled and things have changed a lot since then. But my setup used to be just, just a big feeding trough full of water out here. It's like maybe two, 300 gallons of water and lots of little space heaters placed around this garage to keep things warm wasn't even all that warm. So the issue I had was that I couldn't keep the air warm enough to keep the water warm enough. And there wasn't enough ampage in my breakers to add heating to the pond while also heating the air. It takes a lot of electricity to heat well air and water period. But with a pond of 300 gallons in a space where it's like 65, 70 degrees, you need a pretty strong heater and it just wasn't working out. So what ended up happening was it died. That's what happened with it because I couldn't keep the water warm enough. There are plenty of reports from people saying that these grow just fine if you have warm water, but the air is still cool above freezing, obviously, but you know, 60s and up with warm water, warm water, usually meaning when we're talking about hydroponic or immersed growing, probably 77 degrees Fahrenheit and up. Let me talk more about why this plant is cool now that we've talked about why it sucks as a house plant. <laughs> Did I cover enough why it sucks as a house plant? You could give it a try by putting it in a container and you could wrap a kombucha heater around it or set it on a heating pad. Just be careful that you're not overdoing it. And it needs to be in either a self-watering container, grown semi-hydro or hydro. They shouldn't be allowed to dry out. In fact, I need to water this one much sooner than later. When this plants get plants, when this plant gets larger, these leaves change fairly dramatically when they get larger. So you keep the overall appearance, but this roundedness on the sinus and the depth 
changes a lot. Foliage, I'll put them up here on the screen. The foliage on these plants is wicked when they are larger. They have a heavy, deep sinus, a deeper green color. Even the stems have multiple tones in there and they're spiky, but it's more of a soft spike <laughs> that makes it any better. You don't really need to be playing with the stems anyways. In my opinion, these are one of the coolest aeroids as far as just overall appearance goes. They're one of my favorites. So I am really happy and excited to be able to have gotten this one. I'm gonna try and get up closer here onto the stems so you can see that spikiness that's on there. I don't know how well it's going to show because it's very small and very subtle. It's hard to see, you just have to trust me. They have spiky stems. I mean, it's not part of the appeal. It's all about the foliage, really intense, cool foliage on this one. One of those plants that can pull your eye. So if this is in your periphery, they have the shape and the color to them, a deeper green usually, depending on the light that you're growing them in, that just sucks your face over. <laughs> that sounded weird. Grabs your attention. It's something that stands out. They're a standout plant. Yeah, they do need some help when it comes to their care if you cannot grow them outdoors, but I say it's worth it in the long run. I'm ready to move on to the larger of the plants. Again, I've never gotten big plants from Green Escape before. I can feel inside there. I think there are two decently sized. Yep, there's two of them in there. Decently sized plants. Never finished that sentence. So nice. I'm so happy. Things that I don't have to pot up. Potting things up this time of year can be such a pain. It's so messy and I just cleaned up. Oh, that's beautiful. Looking great. This is a plant that I think we will all be seeing a lot more of over the next few years at the nurseries. Really, even this year, I would imagine come late spring into summer, a lot of the nurseries are going to be selling these, at least up here as house plants are concerned. Look at that foliage. That's stunning. What a great, healthy looking plant. Does it look familiar? Does it bear any resemblance to anything else you may have grown? Looks kind of like a white fusion calathea, but it is not. This is calathea stella. The stella calathea is said to basically be a white fusion that is more sturdy for indoor growing. I don't know if that's true. And what does sturdy mean when we're talking about a calathea? If you try to grow the white fusions, they look an awful lot like this one, but they are very temperamental. They like things nice and warm, which I would imagine this would too. It's pretty much going to be the case with all calatheas. So a warmer room with bright indirect light, consistently moist soil, decent humidity, air circulation. These are plants that can have some issues with their tips. If you have too much chlorine and metals in your water, imagine those are all going to be issues with this plant because it's a calathea. But I am curious because those claims of it being a more sturdy option for indoor growing, I want to know if that's true to an extent. I'm not going to put this in my house. This is staying out here in the grow space. It will do better out here in the grow space. Not going to try and take this indoors. My humidity is not great in the house this time of year. It's probably 50, 60% inside, but it's more that my house stays pretty cool. And these like it nice and warm. It's nice and warm out here. So I think that this would be the best place to keep it. This is just a time will tell. Grow it out and appreciate watching that foliage change. That is so pretty. That is some nice variegation. You're getting a little bit of everything in there. You've got some leaves that just are darker green with some white, you have some that are almost tri-colored. The nice, chonky variegation, I like that. The splattered, speckly spotted variegation, I'm not always crazy about, but with this, it looks like someone took a paintbrush and just put some strokes of various tones of white on there. And the underside does have a slightly bronzish hue to it. I'm not going to be seeing the undersides all that often, so I don't really care about that, but you can kind of see it as the foliage emerges. You can see it coming out from in there, so it adds some extra color. Always nice to have some extra color. Moving on, this is the last one, and I am very curious to see this one in person. I've seen pictures of it before, but I've never had the pleasure of getting to see what the leaves look like. I thought there'd be a big reveal. It's still packed down in there. Well, I don't really know what happened with this one. I'm just gonna focus on how pretty the foliage is first. This, I don't, how is there so much extra soil in here? I expect some soil spillage when a plant ships. That's no big deal, but this is, Kind of insane. Look how much extra there is packed up in there. Maybe they added some soil before they shipped it or it just came up. I can lightly pack it down, but that's okay. I don't want, we don't need to focus on that. Look at the leaves. Isn't that beautiful? This is a dragon skin peperomia, similar to the Argyles, I think is what they're called. Maybe watermelon peperomia might be the one I'm thinking of, but the large leaved peperomias that have 
stripes in them. The dragon skin is more textured. That is a very good name for this because that does look like reptile skin. I am really impressed with how this looks in person. I've only seen pictures and in pictures, I was always just like, oh, that's cool. This is, looks so much better in person than in any of the pictures that I have seen. The growth on here is multiple shades, different tones of greens, have different colored foliage. As you turn the plant, you get a different look to it. There's a lot of change in color shift and sheen and shine, and that's with dirt on the foliage, right? There's potting swell all over this thing, and it's still looking beautiful. Just imagine when this is filled out, this entire container, and it's just a nice, big, full, bushy plant. I can say, just from looking at it, as long as the care is going to be the same as most other of the common household peperomias, which it should be, I have a new favorite. This is beautiful. The variegation is a silvery blue that has a swirl and a spin that goes around the darker green, and even there's more variegation too. When you get into the veins, it's a lighter green that's in there. I don't even know if I would call this green. That's almost a brownish black color in there. And it has the sparkle. That's difficult to pick up on camera. In person, this is sparkling and shining. Looks like it's been painted with some type of metallic paint infused with glitter. I can't, I don't even know how to describe how happy I am with this one. That is an absolutely beautiful plant. I am so happy with this and cannot wait to watch that one grow. Out of everything I got here, I have to say, if you can get your hands on one of these dragon skin peperomias, get it. Because that foliage is stunning. They're versatile too, so I could put this under a cloche if I wanted to, and it would probably just thrive, or I could keep it out on a desk somewhere and it would probably also just thrive. They're great plants, really sturdy plants. With a lot of aeroids like anthuriums, right? The anthuriums that have that bumpy, dragon skin like texture to them those can be more picky and more difficult to grow sometimes that effect right here with this peperomia and i hope that the camera is doing this justice i really hope it's coming across how absolutely beautiful this plant is just for the foliage alone that is some of the best looking foliage i've seen on a house plant in a long time at least on a house plant that you know wasn't something ridiculous like a warokianum something of the source this is just it's just a peperomia and i would imagine probably going to be a pretty common one sooner than later if it isn't already you might be able to find these at your local nurseries i don't know most local nurseries here aren't open this time of year at least not the ones that are close enough that i feel like driving to them there's so much going on in here so much to look at i've seen enough of it though right i probably went on way too long with that plant that's everything overall i'm very happy green escape always comes through with nice plant orders i need to get these little guys potted up, get everything else situated, make sure that the Cretosperma gets some water. It's just a little on the dry side, so need to make sure that gets put into, I'll probably just move into a self-watering container and get everything moved out of the blast zone. This is where my heater <laughs> comes down, right in the front of the water. That was nice. Your palate cleansed. Drastic improvement over the last couple of plant unboxings, that's for sure. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. You're growing the dragon skin. Experiences with the Stella, I have to give that time to see if those claims of being more sturdy or true. Everything else, just stick around and we'll watch it grow together. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.